Hey everybody, what's up? So, I kind of decided to do something a little bit different today. Yes, there is going to be something video game related, so don't worry about it. Um, I'm posting these a little bit separately for a reason. Uh, this will be posted one day in the, the video game movie, video game review, will be posted a few days after. Finished reading a book that I started a while back, um, and that is The Serpent and the Rainbow by Wade Davis. The reason I started reading this book is I remember years ago vaguely because this was actually turned into a horror film by Wes Craven. It was the only movie that scared me, and I don't remember why. It was like late '80s, I want to say. Um, I'm really trying to remember when exactly I saw it. It wasn't actually in the theaters. It was on TV. Um, the, uh, one of the local television stations would run this thing called Friday Night Videos. It might have been in the early 90s. Like I said, I don't remember. I just remember seeing it, uh, watching it with my sister, and it there was one scene that just scared the crap out of me. I haven't seen it since. I would love to, though. I would just love to go back and see it, because I don't remember a lot about it. And I didn't know it was actually based off of a book until I was looking for the movie, and I saw the movie, by the way. Um, that's bad, I know. But yeah, I found out about the book, and it says, you know, the real life. I'm like, okay, what's going on? So I ordered it, and it's actually really interesting. Uh, Wade Davis basically is like a plant expert, anthropologist, whatever you want to call him. Um, he goes to like these different regions. He gets plant samples, trying to figure out, you know, what's going on with them, and in the Serpent in the Rainbow, basically, he is hired by these two guys to go and, I guess, find out what makes zombies. By the way, in Haiti, zombies are spelled Z-O-M-B-I. And they, they talk about all these... Sorry about the beeping. That's my computer. I had to unwrap something and plug it back in. Zombie, basically, from what I've read in the book, um, he's just someone who's turned into a zombie. Now, people fear them. If they come, you know, if they wander back into their village, people don't want them around. And there are people that are put into hotel, uh, hospitals because of this, for their own safety. And one case is this guy, you're going to hear that beeping in here, I'm sorry. Um... He was actually, sorry, it's wrapped up driving me nuts. He uh, got into it. There's kind of like this dispute over land with his brother, and then he dies. And all of a sudden, he comes back to the village. The police come and get him. Uh, they talk about another woman. Let me see if I can find the guy's name in here. Do, do, do. I know it was like I won't be able to pronounce it because half of it is in French. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so there's actually two people that he meets that were turned into zombies, and what the guy he goes and talks to. I guess he was interviewed by the BBC, uh, a couple other groups. And the whole deal was that they want to know what happened. All he remembers is dying. And he goes, well, I remember t hearing people talking about my death, my sister's crying, all this stuff. And he goes, they came and took me away. And he's basically made to act as labor. No pay, nothing. And he doesn't remember how they managed to break free, but these guys that were with him did they said the guy who had turned them into zombies died um, there's reports that there's like an antidote you can give someone Davis really doesn't talk about the antidote because it almost seems like some hate uh, some of the voodoo priests will say there is an antidote some say there isn't um, I've heard from one of the source like salt you know salt does something to break them free and there's actually a plant called the uh, voodoo cucumber that will 
keep them in this catatonic state of under control. And in the process, he actually meets a group of people who are like part of these secret societies. I don't know if they still exist or what. I haven't done that much research. But they decide basically who becomes a zombie, who doesn't. You know, how are you judged? And it's really fascinating to read because what they're saying is that, look, we are the judge, the jury, and the executioner. If you don't follow the rules, if you, you know, if you do all this stuff, then we have a right. And he goes, well, what's one of the biggest reasons for being turned into a zombie? And they say, well, if there's like a land dispute, um, you're not taking care of things. The guy who had basically, uh, he met, had been taken by the police, um, had several children by several different women that, women he didn't take care of. He was dealing with land problems with his relatives. There's a lot of different stuff. The woman that they meet was also a former zombie. Um, you know, they're like, oh, you know, I don't get why I was turned into one. I was well liked. And it comes to find out that people in her village just didn't like her at all. She was a not a nice person, and so my hair driving me nuts. Um, <laughs> it's always one thing or another in these videos. Uh, so yeah, so it really goes hand in hand with a lot of the stuff we talked about. I'm trying to find a passage in here, but he and uh, he meets this woman who's like a priestess almost they call them loas who basically will go into the person like spirits gods whatever you want to call them and they use that person as what they call a horse basically they ride them and they they use that person as their mouthpiece and his whole the whole deal is how can he find out how to create a zombie and they talk about bloaf uh puffer fish there's different types and around Haiti they actually have ones that um, secrete the, enough the right poison that if it's mixed with certain other things will make the person into a zombie and from what I've heard in Japan they will actually serve parts of the puffer fish but you have to um, be specially trained to prepare them because if you're not, I can't find it now, wish I bookmarked it, if you're not specially trained then you could possibly kill someone and even though they know there's possibly a death, there are people who eat this toxin, um, it's it's really interesting, you know, it's an interesting read, I will admit to that because every time we, you know, we hear, we hear about zombies um, in a film, video games, books, they're always the brains type, and I don't. I mean, I don't really understand why this is. I think it's just because it's more frightening in an aspect to think about something that's walking around dead that could kill you. You know, like there's all these different theories, you know, out there, like what could cause a zombie, whether it's a violent outbreak. You know, mankind creates them, whatever the case may be. It's just, it's really odd. It's, it's different. Just to read the cult, the cultural aspects of the book alone, where he goes into Haiti and he talks to all these different people, just trying to find out what's going on. And in the end, his two benefactors basically, one dies, one has serious health problem and he doesn't have the money to really go because they were giving him so much he basically had like open credit or whatever it seems like and he could just like get here, here's money just large amounts of cash and they're like oh yeah let, I'll do this for you one guy he needs tricks him into paying him a large sum of money for a fake zombie powder and they talk about how these you can actually 
sell the person into servitude, basically. Like, yeah, you know, this person did me wrong. I want to get even with them. You pay them money, and they'll turn the person into a zombie. Um, as you know, as a punishment of certain crimes. And you really learn about how. This is back in the 80s, by the way. You learn about how they deal with um, the culture, the policing. And in a sense, the voodoo culture really sprang up from the slave revolt in Haiti. Uh, there was a guy who had this dream that he went back to Africa and how he learned all this stuff. And it's really hard to explain unless you read it. Because there's so much of an impact on what happened with this guy. Uh, some people believe that he turned into a fly and he flew away. They are basically going to kill him. And he was really the start of Haiti. And they do mix, you know, African magic with Catholicism. It's really different. Um, some of the stuff is hard to explain. Because I think one of, the, one of the results is in Haiti, you grow up. Davis talks about basically in Haiti, you grow up fearing becoming a zombie, you fear certain things. And to an outsider like himself, there's this question of, well, why do they fear this? And it seems like even toward, at the end of the book, he doesn't fully understand everything, and he's trying to, and he's trying to immerse himself into their life. But I think that kind of downplays it because he didn't grow up in that culture. And when you don't grow up in that type of culture, you don't fully understand what's happened, what's going on, why there's this fear, why there's this concern of everything. And it really, it really feels like, yeah, he's just saying, look, um, this is what they go through. This is what they deal with. And I can't give you all the answers. That's what it really feels like. But, you know, seeing, seeing just, the, you know, how they live their lives. Um, just talking about the aspects of the voodoo culture itself really is a turning point in the book. And I think that's really great. And I know I keep saying the cultural aspect, but you have to understand... When you live in one place and you're so used to your way of life, going to somebody else's way of life and trying to understand it is a different thing. I think you can read about certain things. Like I could read about this. I could read this book, but I'm not going to be an expert in, you know, Haitian culture, Haitian life, you know, the whole zombie thing. But it's an interesting read because of something. It gives you an idea, and. To me, it seems like the whole Hollywood thing with zombies, I think it's more to us, maybe. Um, the whole idea of the undead, the idea that something could come and kill you because it's not thinking, it's just feeding. And that's just only thought is, I gotta go kill the feed. Kill the feed over and over and over it's it's definitely different it's kind of like if you read world war z where this is a virus and they only have like a short lifespan i think he said like was it about four or five years before the zombie just falls apart but just to think could you just imagine what it would be like to have this like feeling like you're dead but you're still alive you can hear everything that's going around you. You know what's going on. Basically, this toxin, if it's made right, will slow your heart rate down. Where you're still alive. You have no pulse. You really have no heartbeat, but it's low enough to where you're dead, almost. Well, you appear dead to others. And I've heard that there are certain groups that will, like, learn this technique of meditation and that to where they can actually have that same state. But it really makes you wonder. Is this something where... Um, I 
this is something you would be afraid of if you grew up in a culture like that. And I think the answer would be yes, because it almost seems like the fear of becoming a zombie would be enough to try to keep people on the straight and narrow. Because there's no, we're going to kill you. It's You're going to basically become zombie and you're not going to have anything else. And if you think about it, you know, if you snap out of the state where something happens and you go back to the, the village where we lived in and people don't want you to run because to them you're dead. Like, you basically stopped existing within that society. You know, the idea of your family not taking, welcoming you back, people being afraid of you, to where you have to be locked up for your own protection. It's scary enough. Just the thought of that. And I think, from what I was reading, you know, that really seems to be like a really big part of it. And they talk about a lot of the preparation that goes on. Um, it's definitely worth reading, you know, if you like learning about other cultures, if you're interested in zombies, but, you know, not the Hollywood one, definitely give it a read. Um, the movie, like I said, at some point I'm going to track the movie down and I'm going to watch it again, because I don't, all I know is, remember, uh, something in there just scared the crap out of me for the longest time, I never wanted to see it, and because it's been so long, and I don't remember what that was that scared me. I want to go back and see what frightened me. I'm one of those people that I have to know what scared me. I know the movie came out about 1988. So in 88, I would have been about 10 years old. Um, trying to find something here. Give me just a second here. I wish I thought of this earlier when I was, uh... So, it ran from 83 to 2002. So, I want to say... It would have been somewhere between 90 and 94, maybe? Or 88 and 2000... 88 and 94... would have been about when I saw it because I was trying to remember because I know like um, I just remember seeing it after Friday night videos and that's all I can remember but that's it everybody I'll talk to you later take care bye